If your results with mainstream fitness advice haven't matched your expectations so far, then this video is for you. More of what you're currently doing isn't going to get you the results you desire. You need something different. This video will contradict mainstream fitness instruction, and you should hope so, because mainstream fitness instruction is responsible for the disappointing results experienced by the training masses. In an activity where the majority of its participants are drug-free, we have a situation in the fitness industry where instruction that is appropriate for the masses is very hard to find. The fitness industry focuses on the training and achievements of the minority, steroid users with elite genetics for muscle building. The unconventional approach found in this video is what will work for 99% of the population, the drug-free training masses who have lives and responsibilities outside of the gym. Conventional fitness instruction turns the masses into hard gainers, and what you're gonna learn in this video will turn you into an easy gainer. We can't go any deeper until you understand why conventional routines don't work. I wanna give you a warning. Some of you may find this insulting. It's hard to admit that you've spent so much time on something with so little to show for it, but it's not too late to pivot and start getting the results you deserve. Most people never get to grips with what works for regular drug-free people. And by the time they do, they've wasted years following conventional fitness instruction. You're in a position right now where you know that mainstream advice hasn't delivered the results you expected. Don't worry, you're in the right place. By watching Watching this video, you've taken a huge step towards understanding the truth. The harm that steroids have caused individual users is huge, but it's nothing compared to the damage they've caused to the drug-free training masses. In the early 1960s, steroid use became popular in the fitness world, and this led to the promotion of drug-assisted training methods to the masses. These methods were soon considered to be the norm and suitable even for drug-free people. This universal belief is still alive today, and it's killing the modern-day fitness industry. This high-volume, high-frequency, live-your-life-in-the-gym approach stems from two groups of people. The first group are the genetically gifted minority who can thrive on this approach even without drugs, which is probably not you. The second group are those who have learned that any training approach works when you get into drug abuse. But these people rarely mention the importance of drugs in making this training work. Most of them don't even admit to their drug use, and this is what's led to the drug-free masses imitating the train more to gain more approach. These conventional methods do not work for most drug-free people with lives outside of the gym. But luckily for you, the drug route is not the only path to success. The routine I'm going to share with you will yield anyone outstanding results. The conventional bodybuilding approach prescribes more training days than rest days. They use split routines, many exercises per body part, many sets per workout, and tons of isolation exercises. This delivers no gains for most people, and hundreds of thousands of people are living testimony to this reality. Unfortunately, most people have to waste a chunk of their lives on ineffective training methods before they learn their lesson. Few people exploit the power we all have to improve our bodies because so few people train in a way that is appropriate for them. It's no wonder that there's a massive failure rate and a huge turnover of members in every gym. Did you know that over 90% of people quit after three months of hitting the gym? Of course, the lack of persistence and application accounts for part of the failure rate, but it's the lack of effective and practical information for normal people that's to blame. Following the radical approach in this video will ensure that you are the exception to this statistic. Stop imitating people who take steroids and who have elite genetics. Stop following instructions that you know aren't working. You have the power to build an incredible physique, but only if you train on productive routines that you can respond to. Fitness instruction not only has to be effective, but it also has to be practical. You have to eat, train, and rest properly over the long term to achieve your physique goals. So the combination of effectiveness and practicality is key. Consistency is the key ingredient for success, and consistency stems from sustainability. This is one of the main contributors to people's lack of success. Few people with busy lives can stay consistent with a typical bodybuilding approach. Most people have short bursts of intense consistency followed by burnout. They hit the gym every day for a few months and then burn themselves out and quit. And you've likely done this at one point or another. If your approach is practical, you'll be able to sustain it and be consistent over the long term. Consistency beats intensity any day of the week. You now understand the downfalls of conventional fitness instruction. So the question becomes, what do you do instead? I'm going to give you an exact training routine to follow, but not quite yet. You see, there's a common pattern among most fitness information online. It's based on a lack of solid ground. I'm all for challenging the status quo and breaking the rules, but I also like solid ground, not ever shifting sand. I like evergreen principles that are never going to change, not tactics that have short-lived hype and then become obsolete. The polarity fitness philosophy is time 
timeless and based on solid ground. We apply the fundamental principles of drug-free fitness that will never change. It worked decades ago to build impressive bodies and it will work 100 years from now. There are five foundational principles of drug-free training that you must understand before you get into the training routine. Now I'm gonna get into workout A of my Herculean bulking program, which is my drug-free muscle and strength building masterclass. So we're gonna be hitting some barbell back squats, some weighted chin-ups, some overhead press, and then a couple isolation exercises. The first and most important principle is strength gains. The biggest issue with modern day trainees is that they don't understand what produces results. Their measure of success is wrong. They equate success with how much time they spend in the gym rather than how much progress they are making. How you measure success will act as the compass that guides you. Building a great drug-free body is simple. All that matters is progressive overload in good form. You need to get very strong. Everything else sits atop this foundation and that's why it comes first. Progressive overload means making your muscles work harder over time. This is the only way to see positive adaptations in your physique. Our bodies adapt to the stress we impose on them. It does not have to occur in every workout, but over time you have to subject your muscles to more tension and workload. When you're drug free, there's a strong relationship between muscle size and strength. The biggest muscles are not always the strongest muscles and the strongest muscles are not always the biggest muscles, but for the great majority of drug-free people, there's a strong correlation between size and strength. There are other elements to consider, but keeping all factors constant, if you build up to bigger weights, then you will build bigger muscles. Let's say you took two drug-free trainees and put them side by side. The first guy bench presses 315 for six reps, and the other guy can only bench press 135 for six reps. The guy bench pressing 315 will have more upper body muscle mass every single time. The only case in which this rule no longer applies is when steroids come into play. And this is why most bodybuilding routines have no focus on gaining strength. Rather, they focus on pumping light weights for lots of volume. This approach will not work for a drug-free individual. When you're drug-free, you must get strong to get big. The next tenet is simplicity. The 80-20 principle asserts that a minority of inputs or efforts lead to a majority of the results or outputs. Incredible results are disproportionately created by fewer actions than most people realize. Some things matter a lot more than others. You need to focus on the vital few things that will create disproportionate outcomes. Building a great natural physique is about focus and progression. Muscle gains come from working hard on simple routines and staying consistent over time. Due to everyone's complexity bias, my philosophy is usually dismissed. People think, no way, that's all there is to it. But the reality is that today's experts and fitness influencers have overcomplicated fitness. The reality is that building muscle and strength is not complex. The essence of building a great physique is simple focus and progression. Simple routines with fewer exercises, sets, and training days are the most effective. The more complicated your routine is, the more unproductive it becomes. You will spread your focus and energy thin and dilute the effort that you can put into that which delivers. The next tenet is basic. And when I say basic, I'm referring to the exercise selection. You need to focus on basic compound exercises. The basic compound exercises are the ones that will build the substance of your physique. The isolation exercises are there to plug the gaps left by the core compound movements. Most guys focus too much on isolation exercises. They place too much emphasis on proportion before they've built any muscle mass. And serious muscle mass isn't built with isolation exercises. It's built with heavy compound movements. If you wanna build a world-class drug-free body, then build your squat up to two times your body weight for five reps. Get your overhead press to your body weight for five reps. Get your bench press to 1.5 times your body weight for five reps. Get your deadlift to 2.5 times your body weight for five reps. This is the sort of achievement required to reach your muscular potential. Basic movements are not sexy in today's fitness industry. You won't go viral on TikTok promoting them, but you can rely on them to get results. People today are more attracted to new and science-based than time-proven and reliable. The basic compound exercises have stood the test of time. They have put more muscle on more bodies than any fancy exercise someone on Instagram came up with. The next tenet is low volume and frequency. You need to keep your training volume low for two primary reasons. The first reason is to give you the ability to train hard hard enough to stimulate muscle growth. The more sets you do, the less likely you are to train hard enough. Doing a lot of volume means spreading yourself thin and diluting the effort that you give to each set. And the second reason is to give you plenty of recovery between workouts and make consistent strength gains. So everything always ties back into progressive overload and gaining strength. And it's much easier to get strong on a low volume approach than a high volume approach. For most drug-free people, four or more workouts per week have little to no potential for producing gains. 
no matter how dedicated the person is or how much they eat and sleep. Most drug-free people end up going through the motions in their workouts when they train four plus days a week. Thus, they are unable to train hard enough to stimulate muscle and strength gains. If they can train hard enough to stimulate muscle growth, they still only have three or fewer recovery days each week. This means that their bodies cannot grow in response to the stimulus they create in the gym. You might get a nice pump, you might be hitting the muscle from all different angles, you might be doing the optimal amount of training volume, but if you're bench pressing 150 pounds for six reps right now, and in one year you're still bench pressing 150 for six, you haven't gotten bigger, despite all the time you're spending in the gym. We all know guys who live in the gym and work out five to seven days per week. They lift the same weights month after month, they look the exact same month after month, and sooner or later they throw in the towel. The more is better mentality is the single biggest factor hurting the physique progress of drug-free people. Our societies condition us to believe that the more we do, the more we get. Work longer hours, get a bigger paycheck. Study more, get better grades. But due to our body's limited ability to recover, this isn't the case with weight training. In most endeavors, practice makes perfect. If you want to learn to play the piano, for example, practice and then practice some more. Fall asleep, drooling on the keys, and wake up with your fingers in place to begin playing again. With weight training, the point of diminishing returns comes quickly. It's our enthusiasm for lifting weights that ruins progress. We train too often, we include too many different exercises, and we grind ourselves into the ground doing too many sets of each. Training too much isn't as forgiving as excessively practicing the piano. We don't get sore fingers from a training obsession, we exhaust our ability to recover, and we injure ourselves. At best, progress stalls, but at worst, our bodies break down, injuries pile up, and we're forced to take time off. Bodybuilders will succeed following the train more to gain more approach, but bodybuilders are also on steroids and have elite genetics for bodybuilding, so they aren't the role models to mimic when you are drug-free. When you're drug-free, your recovery is limited. It will take you much longer to recover from a hard training session than a steroid user. To achieve consistent progress in the gym, you have to recover between every single workout. We build muscle and strength during the recovery process. If you don't recover between workouts, it means you trained beyond your ability to recover. This means your body couldn't grow and adapt in response to the stimulus that you created in the gym. When you train within your recovery ability, every time you enter the gym, you'll feel fresh. And when you feel fresh for every single workout, you can make consistent progress. And this means doing a small quantity of hard work in the gym and then getting out of the gym, resting, recovering, and coming back a little bit stronger. The next tenet is hard work or high intensity. This is where most people fall short. To succeed with a low volume and low frequency training approach, you have to train hard. Training hard means taking every set in the gym very close to failure. Training to failure means taking a set to the point where with good form, you cannot move the bar for one more rep. Most people's failure point is three to five reps shy of their true failure point. Most people do not know what hard training is, and this is why most people cannot fathom working out just twice per week. They've never experienced pushing close to failure. If they trained hard, they wouldn't be able to be in the gym for more than two to three workouts a week. You can train long or you can train hard, but you cannot do both. There are two methodologies in the training world. There's high volume, low intensity training, and there's low volume, high intensity training. You'll notice that there's no low volume, low intensity training, and there's no high volume, high intensity training. When you're drug free, there's a trade off you have to make when it comes to volume versus intensity. When you're doing a lower volume of training, you have to make up for the low volume with a high intensity, meaning you have to put more effort into the reduced amount of training that you're doing. This is where the polarity fitness approach sits, and if you understand the previous tenets, you'll know why. It comes down to recovery and strength gains. When you use a high volume approach, you have to lower your training intensity. You cannot train as hard because you have more exercises and sets to get through. This means you have to dilute your effort to get through it all, which will result in you going through the motions, or in other words, being unable to train hard enough to stimulate muscle growth. This is what the conventional bodybuilding approach entails, and it does not work for most drug-free people. This style of training is very fatiguing and will cause overtraining. Less is more for drug-free trainees. Effective training is about quality, not quantity. You only need a low volume of quality training to stimulate lots of growth. Everyone would 10x their gains if they cut their training volume in half, doubled the rest days between workouts, and got serious about delivering real effort in a reduced amount of training time. When you're pushing to get stronger week in and week out, you will discover why so few people have great physiques. Intense training is hard work. You will be training only twice per week, but the training you'll be doing is no walk in the park. This is nothing like the going through the motions training that you're used to. Remember that to compensate for the lower training volume, you must make every set 
that count. Building a great physique requires determination. It's about pushing your body to go further and further. It's the slow but steady accumulation of the bit more that adds up to big gains over time. Hard training is uncomfortable and you're responsible for pushing yourself through it. Insufficient effort in the gym is a big reason why most people don't get the body they desire. But there are plenty of people who do train hard enough and still lack great physique development. This is because they fall short in the other recovery factors. You have to get all the other support factors right to reap the results of hard training. You have to eat, sleep, and rest enough. Physique success comes from applying the total package of proper training, proper nutrition, and proper recovery. You cannot compensate for a deficiency in one area with an excess in another. On the other side of the coin, there are those with an intensity fixation. They believe training intensity is the be all end all. This belief comes from guys like Mike Menser and Dorian Yates. They were bodybuilders who popularized high intensity training. High intensity is a means to an end. It's a tool that we use to achieve progressive overload. Training hard is not the goal, progression is. The value of bringing high levels of intensity is not the effort per se. What counts is the progressive overload that the high intensity can produce. Pushing yourself to the absolute limit will not in itself make you bigger and stronger. The very hard work you do will only produce gains if you meet your recovery needs, avoid injuries and overtraining, and thus produce progressive overload over time. The best way to align your training with these principles is to follow a full body twice a week training split. Yes, you will see the best results training twice per week on non-consecutive days. Many different interpretations fit into the overall context of the polarity fitness philosophy, but a full body twice a week setup is the best way to set up your training. It strikes the perfect balance between workload and recovery. For most drug-free trainees who are training hard, three workouts per week are too much. The guiding statement that sets the foundation for every every productive training program is as follows. The foundation of your muscle and strength gains will come from mastering a handful of compound exercises. These exercises must work well for you. You must be able to train them with intensity. They must cover the majority of your musculature and you must devote yourself to getting as strong as you can at them over time and in good form. Regardless of what level of lifting you're at, this is the key approach to adopt. Each workout will mostly consist of the core compound exercises that you are focusing on mastering and getting as strong as possible at. The core exercises are as follows. The squat, bench press, deadlift, overhead press, weighted pull-ups and chin-ups, rows and dips. An effective routine on a full body twice a week setup consists of three to four compound exercises and two isolation exercises. When it comes to exercise selection, I would caution against giving up on the exercises that provide the most benefit. Unless you have a very good reason to not train the basic compound exercises, you should do them. If you have an injury or structural limitation that prevents you from being able to train one of these exercises, that's okay. You can substitute that exercise for a close variation that works better for you. If you have to make some substitutions, look at it through the lens of movement patterns. You need to have a big compound exercise for each of the key movement patterns. You need a squat, hip hinge or deadlift, vertical push and pull, and a horizontal push and pull. Choose the isolation exercises based on your weak points, but remember that you only need two in each workout. An effective routine means doing two working sets for each exercise, maximum three following a warm up. Another way of looking at this is total sets per workout. You wanna do six to eight total working sets for compound exercises, eight sets are the maximum upper limit, and four to six sets for isolation exercises, six sets being the upper limit. This brings you to a total of 10 to 14 hard sets in each workout. This structure would work best for most people. And trust me, when you bring enough effort to each set, it's more than enough. There are only two training styles you will ever need. Straight sets across where you use the same weight across every set and a top set back off set approach where you start with a heavy set and then drop the weight for the second set. I call this the polarity training method. You'll always take full rest periods of three to five minutes between sets on compound movements and two to three minutes of rest between sets on isolation exercises. If you are beyond your first six months of training and you know the technique of the basic compound exercises, I recommend doing full body twice a week with two different sets of exercises. If you're completely new to training, I recommend doing full body twice a week with the same set of exercises in each workout until you are comfortable with the exercises and have mastered the technique. Here's an example of how it looks when doing the same exercises on both days. Here's a basic structure to follow for full body twice a week with two different sets of exercises. 
exercise. In one workout, you want a squat, upper body push, and an upper body pull, and pick two isolation exercises of your choice. In the other workout, you want a deadlift, upper body push, and an upper body pull, then pick two isolation exercises of your choice. Here's how this looks. One of the beautiful things about this approach is the enthusiasm you'll start to cultivate for working out. When you aren't in the gym all the time, you start to look forward to your workouts. Hitting the gym is no longer a chore, it's something you look forward to. This is so important for your long-term sustainment of training. You have to enjoy training and look forward to hitting the gym. This is the only way to sustain it over the long term. The ultimate question you have to answer is what can I stick to for life? This question will automatically cut out the short-term BS you can't sustain. You have to approach fitness with a long-term perspective. It will give you the greatest returns from compounding and consistency over time. We're not trying to get in shape for a few months. We are trying to have amazing bodies for the rest of our lives. This is a marathon, not a race. So many people approach fitness as if it's a race they need to win, but any worthwhile endeavor in life is an infinite game, not a finite game. The first core mission of Polarity Fitness is to spread real drug-free fitness information. The second part of the mission is to teach a practical and balanced approach to physique transformation. The beautiful thing is that they go hand in hand. The polarity fitness approach allows you to lead a balanced lifestyle and focus on other areas of life while building the body you desire. This gets a ton of criticism in today's fitness industry because everything is about sacrifice. It's an all or nothing mentality. A balanced approach isn't hardcore, but I would rather build a great physique while focusing on the other areas of my life. I want to be a multi-dimensional person, not one dimensional. Nothing is fulfilling about only having a good physique. I want to be the total package. And the truth is that the bodybuilding approach is obsessive and imbalanced. I have no interest in living in the gym and obsessing over it. I don't care for the stereotypical gym rat lifestyle. You will get no benefit out of it. The way I see it, everyone has missed the point of fitness. I see fitness as a vehicle to enhance my life. Nothing more. It's one piece of the pie. It should not be the focal point of your life. Don't get me wrong. Being in top shape is crucial. You are walking through life handicapped otherwise. Was, but the live your life in the gym approach is detrimental. Fitness has been a force multiplier in my life. I was fat growing up. I had low self-esteem and was very self-conscious. Being fat held me back in my life. I had no confidence and self-belief. Fitness is what gave me the confidence and self-belief I needed to step out of my shell. And this translated into every aspect of my life. I started to walk around with deep level confidence and self-belief. This is what fitness can do for you. And this is the deeper reason behind why I do what I do. I saw firsthand how powerful of fitness can be in transforming someone's life. I want you to experience this force multiplying effect, but the truth is that you won't experience this effect following conventional fitness instruction. Of course, this is because most people never see success with this approach, but more importantly, you won't get these benefits if your life revolves around fitness. This will do more harm than good. Fitness will only act as a force multiplier if you're also focused on these other avenues of life. Focus on your fitness, but also focus on all the other ways you can improve your life. There are so many productive activities besides working out. Read a book, spend time with family, go for a walk, start that business, go out and socialize with the opposite sex, go do some martial arts, whatever makes life worth living for you. That's what it's all about. There's more to life than training and muscles. Reap the benefits that having a great physique will yield in the other areas of your life. It astonishes me how many people work so hard towards a great body only to spend the majority of their lives in the gym. What's the point?